We have to give Daddy a second, honey. Daddy's gonna do this here, right? It's really important, okay? God wants me to do this right now because this needs to be talked about, right? This is for real. Give me your treats, Sophie. Give me a second, honey, okay? Excuse me, I'm a little C wants some of these treats. I got him some real chicken treats, you know? They're, they're real chicken, they're really nice, right? Made with real chicken, you know? Uh, now, I mean, it's really got me, okay? You know? It breaks my heart, right? And I don't mean to call the names, I don't mean any insults. This is something I run into all the time, and this happens to be another great example, and I just had to laugh about, I just, I didn't know whether to laugh or cry, you know what I'm saying? I, I just, now you see on my screen, I, I, I now, uh, he gave something to, uh, people called the 12 tribes from Chattanooga, okay? Now, sometimes it's easier to spot the lukewarm than others, that's the best way I can put it, okay? <clears throat> I don't mean to be insulting anybody, but you know, they're fa they, they get led astray by these groups and all that, right? And they get fed dung, which in modern words is shit, okay? Because it's not a sin in the Bible. When the, guys, look at you. I mean, I tell you, I sang uh, for you people, even though my first time and I don't sing. What did I sing? Do any of you even remember? I, I, I stepped out in faith and sang something that I've never sung before. But what did I sing in particular? I saw him as 113 every day, but has any of you read it? He raises up the poor out of the dust. He lifted up the needy out of the dunghill. A dunghill is a shit pile. You're basically living in the shit pile of your sin in modern vernacular. It's not a sin. It's the way you guys think about it. It's your mind that makes it a sin because you're the one dragging in the gutter. You twist words so you don't understand their true meaning. To make them obscene and perverse. Those are the foul and wicked minds that Jesus didn't like. They really bothered him in case some of you forget. Since you claim to read the Bible, you don't understand, right? Are you praising the Lord from the rising of the sun to the setting? I take it 24 hours. And you profess to be Christian? You cherry pick little tiny bits and pieces. Oh, la di da, yeah, I love it. You don't even understand the Bible. My God is a God of war as well. He loves me very much enough to come to my house chat with me and heal me uh you know and maybe if you give him a call he would have told you don't give your house to a bunch of false prophets and shepherds he wear a wolves and sheep clothing for there shall be many that shall come in my name but they aren't because they're going to come up and say didn't we do this and didn't we do that and he goes, get away from me i know you not have you ever read the bible other than cherry pick a two three verses take anything out of context excuse me when you hang with satanists and call them brothers and sisters when they got stuff on their page about bringing forth demons and wanting to set the captives free. The only ones they're talking about is the devil and doing sacrifices and blood rituals. Excuse me. Uh, wake up and spell your, uh, smell the sulfur, because you know where you're going to be hanging soon. Hey, I made mistakes, right? I made mistakes. I'm not saying I didn't. I, but the thing is, there's a difference. See, I learned from mine. I truly repented. And I didn't go out there pretending to be holier than thou when I, when I, when I could clearly tell lukewarm when I smell one this time, right? Come on, man. You're giving yourself uh, credit for kudos. What did God say about supporting the people that are bad? If you support them, they'll consider you supporting their works and consider you guilty like them. Or don't you remember? It's in the Bible you report to read. A place called the Twelve Tribes from Chattanooga, Tennessee. Uh, what part of Con man, flim flan, snake oil, or did uh, you know? Did you fall out of your? Uh, did you fall out of your cradle on your head a few times when you were a baby, and you don't remember the meaning of words? I keep reminding you. I don't mean to insult, but sometimes you need a wake up call. You think Jesus didn't rebuke him for a reason? It's called correction, man. It's called wake up and do what the Bible says. Study to show yourself approved, right? Uh, by God, right? Are you seeking His face? I, you know, I don't like doing this, man. I'm not doing it out of love, man. You're going around with much love. Well, you want love? This is love. Love is pulling you from the fires before you get in there. Love is pulling you out of the water. Give you that wake up call. Hey, slap you in the face. And, hey, wake up, man. You're drowning. You're going to drown in your sins, man. Wake up. I'm doing that for you right now, Shannon. Check yourself. I was checking myself big time. After everything I've done for God, and I've done things, 
and I've seen things you, you haven't even dreamed of. You're, you're not even scratching it anywhere close to the level I was walking. And I was questioning myself on whether I had the faith of a mustard seed. And I had seen wonders. I had laid hands. I've seen it. I've done a few things. And I had. I know I hadn't seen it all. But I thought I'd seen pretty much a lot of things, right? And I was wondering how they, after parting the waters, I'm telling everybody, they can listen right here, how they, after parting the waters and everything else that happened there, could they still go back to idols? I couldn't understand it, you know? Like, you know, and after all that, they did not have the faith of a mustard seed. And it really was on my heart. Like, how, what if I don't have it? Do I really have the faith of a mustard seed? Because if I wait too long to find out and I'm standing before God and I don't, I ride the slide because I was too lazy to figure it out myself. And the only way to figure it out is to check myself, make sure I'm not full of myself, make sure I don't know it all, to study the Word of God to show myself approved. And I was working, even though I was working for God and He moved my life and talked with me before, I was still checking myself. Right? Because what do these guys, they want guys bow down to them, right? But what did the angels say? Don't bow to no man. Uh, no, not them, nobody. Only to God, right? Yet they bow down to all these preachers in his groups. They follow blindly the blind sheep. The false prophets lead them. They're hirelings. Got the cash cow. God did not send out beggars. A lot of you forget that. You forget what Jesus said because you listen to hirelings. You got conned out of a house because you're not as bright as you want to think you are. Most of the drugs out there have memory loss, and I don't know what your excuse is. I really don't. You know, you much love, that much love and all that sounds nice, man. You're living in a fanny store, man. Goldilocks or whatever. You, you know, why don't you go la di da down the merry go bridge, man? You can't. You have no right to be preaching the Bible unless you till you read it. I'm telling you the word, man. And I can talk to it with authority on that because I'm a guy that God actually talked to. And he talked to a lot of people. And, and it's not just me, but I'm saying I'm one of the guys God talked to. And there are a lot of them out there. When God talks to somebody, hey man, you know, either in trouble or doing something good, okay? Basically, there are you know, only two when you're going to talk to somebody, right? Actually talk to somebody. And I'm sure there are others that will back this up, right? When God is moving in your life, right? Now, he's either, he's either good or bad. You've either done something good, the way he's moving, or something bad, right? Look at the Israelites as an example. When they did what God wanted them to do, he richly blessed them, okay? But when they didn't want to do uh, what God wanted them to do, like putting idols and all that, he punished them, okay? Now, if God is right now running around and healing a lot of people all over it, I know one beautiful lady, Bernice, okay, in the Netherlands, okay? You, 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 got me ins you insulted me when, when I saw the way you said that. When there are true believers out there like Bernice, who went through a nightmare and still had the strength to stand tall in her faith for Jesus, right? After everything she went through, and you dare to call yourself a Christian when you don't even know what it is, this lip service, do you know the fate of those who only honor God with their lips? You don't even want to know. I got a friend of mine, Ray, who made a video about it. God gives him visions. You don't even want to go there. I also got it on my page. Some great messages. Check out the fate of those who only honor God with their lips. Oh, yes, because you'll be joining them soon unless you actually repent and actually open the book and actually read chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Because no cherry picking. You cherry pick, you change the word of the book. The, Bible. What do you think Satan trusted Jesus with? Scripture. He's a scripture lawyer. He knows more better than anybody living on the planet. And he knows the parts that twist. So it changes the message. And by cherry picking, you alter the message of God. You're editing the word of the God. He tells you in the Bible, don't edit my word. And if you do, you pay the price. You lose your life. Your name is stricken from the book of life. So I tell you this out of love. I don't know you personally. There's a lot of people I don't know personally in this world. I tell you. Some anger me, some not. But I remember Revelation 7, 9. Those are my brothers and my sisters. That brings me peace. That stills the righteous indignation. And that's what God told me once I didn't know what it was. And it brings peace to my soul. And returns the inner peace and calm. It's coming back on me now. And that feeling. Why do the blind who don't read the Bible or don't understand it go out there trying to teach others? The blind leading the blind only leads down the highway to hell because they're too busy partying, thinking they're getting out early. And forget the Bible says you're supposed to put on the armor every day. You're supposed to endure to the end every day. And they, they think they're going to fly it, but they forget. Ezekiel uh, 13, verses 18 down, read it. Jesus is pissed off big time that they're, they're so covered that they're, try, they're trying to 
cover his outside, trying to cover, cover to stop him from helping. Them. They're going to tell him they're going to fly away. Don't you understand, Babylon man? They want to build a tower to save themselves. Next flood, teaching his kids to fly away. They didn't know a lot of the Bible, so I recommend the King James. But and one of them, I think, it's the NIV. They call the birds. It makes no sense. The Canaanites have been busy. Right? Jesus was pissed off because he's talking about the future. Ezekiel talks a lot about the future because some of you don't know that, right? Jesus is pissed off that they're going to teach his kids to fly away, which ain't true. The rapture was only talked about first. The only time ever first in 1830. I can't remember if it was 1830 or 1832. I think it's 1830, right? By a woman who had a bad dream and the guy's ran with to keep the pews full. Give me a break. Indulgence is, oh, buy your relatives out of hell. Oh, give us money and God will greatly bless you. Big time gives you your health, gives you everything. When Jesus rebuked him for stealing the homes of widows and orphans and being thieves, a den of thieves. And, oh, man. If you don't learn from the Bible, you're doomed to repeat it. And you know what they said? P.P. Barnum said it's great. It really fits right now. A sucker is born every minute. Okay? You know what P.P. Dar did one time? I'll tell you this. this is, it, it, it's relative. Okay? He had this thing there. You know, people going in there and, you know, nickel go in, right? He thought they were hanging there too long. And he needed a way to move them through faster. And he put some signs, this way to the egress, this way to the egress, and then and, and, egress through this door, right? Uh, for some of you who don't know, egress means exit. So all these people didn't know what the fancy word was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they went in, oh, let's go see the egress. Some of them may have just gone in there and not even seen a thing yet. Oh, there's an egress, let's go check it out. And what it does is the door, once they went out, they're outside, and that's it, see ya, you're done. They needed to pay another nickel to get back in, see? They went for the fancy word that they didn't understand. Egress, exit. The exit, you know, where's the exit? Egress, that's what it's called, right? And uh, he turned around and he made a huge profit. Because everybody was going there, oh, check out the egress. Some of them didn't even see the place. Had to go back in and pay another nickel. They just smartened up a little longer, right? But, you know, it's like getting a nickel to put in there was a lot of money for some people back there. But he, he outwitted them by putting a word there that meant something that they didn't understand or thought was something else, right? Just that one thing. Satan's greatest trick to me is to make people think he didn't work. That he wasn't real. You know, it, it all can't work. There's no Satan. Well, that means there's no God. He'll go and sin. In Matthew 24, verse 38, their lives away. Like everything's normal. Everything going around us. Even though Hosea's a rockin', you know, you got animal deaths everywhere. And I love animals. I'm an animal person. God richly blessed me with animals. And I kind of like a modern day Noah because I wouldn't have my, I had my own little zoo for a while until so someone I came home from work and someone had gotten rid of them. Uh, she left very quickly, shall we say, out of the house rather extremely quickly. Because I love them. They're mine. God bless you with the animals. I did some ministry on a reserve. And all the wild dogs, the people were afraid of them threw stones at came to me for love. And they bellied up. Kid Rock seemed to think it was pretty cool. He didn't have any problem watching me play with the dogs. I guess some of you don't like animal lovers, right? I'm an animal lover. I take some things seriously. They were sacrificing animals because I was going there and trying to get drug addicts and alcoholics off drugs, helping them. After a few, they murdered one of the dealers. I helped, okay? I take some things seriously when they hurt animals, okay? And then I, and I went to try to help some people and I wasn't good enough to go into a church there because I was a wrong complexion when they wanted to talk to the guy that I laid hands on for Jesus, right? And the thing is, they want to see, they want to take a picture of him, and then he wasn't even good enough to sit there with the praise and worship, or just the songs, let alone the service. They wanted him out of it. They didn't want him. And I wasn't even good enough anyway, because I was the wrong complexion. You tell me that's the house of the Lord? Honestly? And none of you remember the seven churches, how they all thought they were cool, but five were clearly not? Do you ever figure out that two left is one third, basically? One third hot, one third not. The lukewarm is spewing out of your mouth. When you're not paying attention to the word, how dare you say you're studying yourself to show you proof? If you're not studying to show yourself a uh, proof, then you're babbling nonsense and, you, and you're falling for. Uh, I mean, I mean, come on! Uh, I got a great bridge I can sell you. If I was, if I was dishonest, I would sell you the Brooklyn Bridge and a few others. Uh, you know, in a heartbeat. You know, if I was one of those crooks, because man, you got it. TV said, Barnum said, "There's a sucker born every minute because you're walking around with blinders on." You've been lied to for so long, you forgot how to think. Pay attention. God said to go out, be as wise as serpents, but as gentle as sheep. Well, 
A wise serpent wouldn't have been dumb enough to do that word. You profess to know something you don't even know nothing about. The person who actually talks with God and asks questions, you think is useless. The person knows nothing. The person that God heals, you, you act like they know nothing. Well, guess what? Every day, God is healing people all over the planet, Shannon. Every day. Beatrice is a lady. She was blind and I can't tell her story. It's awesome. God never abandoned her. There are all kinds of them getting healed every day because God is real. He didn't say, play hide and seek, seek me like a game. He said, seek me. Those who seek my face. He rewards those who listen. Read the very Bible. You purport to carry. You know, uh, I don't think you're going to have too much use for it in hell. Maybe it'll make you read it there. But better to read it now and correct yourself before you're standing before God. That's called utter love. Because I could have been angry and said nothing. And God would have known that. But what is the watchman on the wall? Because I'm more than one thing for God. I'm versatile for my Lord. He saved my life and gave me a life when all the specialists said, that's it. They mess you up. It's too bad mistakes. A uh, bad fly by night quad. They really mess me up bad. Even contaminated blood. You're, you're gone. You're done for. Jesus had another story. I told him only God decides when I live or die. And I'm over 12 years past through the grave. And I'm not wearing any patches. Because he healed me March 12th. If I'm so dumb and I'm so wrong and I know nothing at all, why did he even bother taking the time to come by and say hello to me? Have you ever wondered that? I'm not going to lie because he healed me. Only an idiot lies and tells bullshit after God heals them. Because what God giveth, he can take it away. And there's something worse than hell for right now. It's him making me take the patches and put them back on again. Because I know I did something wrong and I know hell awaited me. So there are things worse than hell for the moment. And after hell comes a lake of fire. If you haven't figured it out. And that's something I ain't going to go. Period. I live to serve. And I know a peace and a contentment that you will never know. Because I've given my life to Jesus and I live to serve by my free will. Not because he healed me. I would only ask for my heart. He fixed my memories and a lot more. And he said he gave me his trust again and put me back to work. I lay hands on my Jesus because it works. Everybody I laid hands on is healed. Every, and not me doing it, it's God. I'm just a vessel. There are lots of others doing it every day. I stopped doing it a number of years ago, and, I, and I'm getting back to it because he wanted me to. I had to speak on his times because he let me know what's going on. I've been, I've been in my cave for a little while, nine years, because he wanted me flexible, ready to move when I wanted to, working on my middle of Romans 12.12. 12. But I understand a lot of things. My wife just died, you see me, crying out of the body with the Lord. I know things that the Lord has revealed because he said he will reveal to you if you, look, if you happen to look in your Psalms, if you happen to remember what that is. He tells you that if you seek him really vigilantly and study his word there, he will reveal to you stuff the ancients didn't even know because you're seeking him and, and looking in his word and he'll show you things that will blow your mind. And once you see that, it's like so simple. The stuff you guys think is complicated is like a, a three, four piece child's visit. It's all written in black and white. You just guys speed reading or whatever, you just don't want to bother reading it. You trust some higher. Oh, he said this, I'm going to do that, and they don't even look at it. Quote two, three verses, and that's it. You think you're going to get to heaven in there? This thing called lukewarm is there for a reason. That's why he calls them the lukewarm virgins who had no oil. You know, they took off to go buy some oil from the cold, and they missed the groom, and they knocked on the door, and he said, I know you not. Which side of the door do you want to be on? Easy, you can correct it. You say, God, I'm sorry. I was asleep with a switch, man. That's all it is. But it's got to be real. From the heart. You got a shot here, right? And Angelique, I heard some things about you. And you know, I, you know now, I, I know that person you're talking about. I know he's got some issues. I have a few issues with him too, right? Um, this is a time to be bold for the Lord. And I think he's been a bit meek, you know? And he does a little bit of guesswork on some things as well. But see, that's not his calling that I have. He got his own, every, every got different parts of the body. And God picked me, which had been dead. Every time I died, he kept on bringing me back. Because this is my time and season, he said. I have to speak on what he wants me to speak. Because he picks the ones he wants. You guys love to give each other titles and you don't know what you're talking about. So you're going to take a dead man walking. Because i got nothing to lose. I work for God. What's the worst you can do? Kill me? Fear the guy who can kill your body and do worse. Kill your soul. Fear the guy that can throw you in the lake of fire. Man, oh man, oh man. You guys just don't get it. When other people, there's people all over the world 
It should be dead. Like Bernice, man, look at oh man, she's a walking miracle. When God is doing that every day and you act like he doesn't exist. And you go, oh la da da, yeah, you say things and you live your worldly lifestyles. Jesus didn't even have a place to lay his head. Come on, man. But look at you guys. Oh, I'm gonna have this, I'm gonna have that. You don't even know the word of mansions. In me in mistranslation, in my father's house are many rooms, and my father's house is coming here. The, those that are right with God get a room in God's house. You think you Luke Warmer gonna get a room in God's house? Dream on, man. You ride the slide. He's separating the wheat from the chaff. Uh you can't think you're wheat, seriously. If you don't even have the decency to open it up and read his word and ignore him, you really think you deserve the blessings he's given you? He's been blessing people and getting and, and, and just watching. Some people are hanging themselves right now. Sooner or later. My wife died in June twenty sixth, okay, he mean March twelfth. The last thing I expected is my wife to die. But what happened if, if it happens to you? Auto accidents, all kinds of stuff happens any time. And you're suddenly standing before the Lord. It's too late to say I'm sorry then. You know, you know, since he's the ward man, he's the judge, he's the jury, right? And he owns the prison. You do the crime, unless you repent and say sorry and you're a friend of Jesus, you do the time. And those of you too lazy to read the book, well, guess what? The best lawyer in town is Jesus, right? Call upon Jesus, and guess what? If you do right by him and do as he says, you know, he knows the judge. You don't have to worry about it in prison time, but so you can't not read the book and get there, see? Jesus doesn't re represent those that don't really mean it, man. He only stands up for those who stand tall in faith. I mean, sorry. Hey, he's only uh, one guy, like you say, right? He can only represent uh, all the people in um, Revelation 7 9, and you see he's going to have his fans full. And he's not really into representing Satan as a follower of the beat system because his dad is a judge and he's all about just and fair. And Satan is on the other side, right? After all, right? You want to live this life of sin? There's a price to be paid for it. And you know, Satan doesn't even learn, even though after God loves him so much that he, he let him out in parole. And most of you guys seem to forget that. He even gave Satan another chance, too. And after all the ones he's given you, that moron, and, and, you know, he is a moron at that point, right? Because he was there, locked up, and he turns around and he tries it again, right? And the thing is, a lot of you are going to be having to worry in the mark of the beast who are out there, the ones in Revelation 22 15, are going to join him. Some will, you know, can be hopefully saved. I, I think they'll some be saved during that thousand years of pure, untwisted teaching because Satan can't even influence. But a lot of them, we're going to turn around and jump on Satan. Again. Oh, I'll give you back the old life. You'll be this and you'll be that. And they'll fall for every one of them. Because they want that fancy. You know, don't you remember what Lot's wife did? She turned around yearning for the things of the past. Even though the angel said, hey, we've got to go to this place get destroyed. God said, it's wicked. we got to get out of here. Even though they murdered one of her daughters earlier. It talks about in the book of Joshua. Most of you might have forgot. Lot had another daughter. They murdered her. Okay. All grins and giggles. And she looked back, wanting to miss that. Green Acres. Oh, New York is where I want to be, right? Angels of God telling her, get out of there. The place could be destroyed. God hates it. Oh, I want to be there. Why do you think she was turning into a pillar of salt? How many of you are like Lot's, Lot's wife or worse? Yearning for the worldly things that God walked away from. When God called his people, he said, hey, man, follow me. What did they do? They walked off. Not That's not for everybody. I know. I understand that. But they walked off. They, they they left everything, their comfort zone, to follow Jesus. Well, you know, and what do you say to the rich guy? And, and the problem was he had to get rid of everything he had, you know, lacking that one thing, right? Now, I, I my, my funds have gone. I've given away stuff. I've bought rather expensive gifts. I ship goods from out of country to give away as gifts, okay? Yeah? To un unappreciative people and relatives who never bothered to even call me because... When you turn away, no one is calling you, okay? But the only one who never abandoned me the whole time was Jesus, who talked with me, nurtured me, showed me things, molded this broken piece of clay. Now, who is going to know more about God? The guy who actually seeks his face and spends time with him. Like, oh, and I know there are many, I mean, there's a lot of us out there, you know? A number no man can count. But they said, some of them are dead already, but hey, got to be. Uh, or you, who just, Cherry pick a few words and think you know it all. Who's going to know it all? The guy that actually reads it? Or the guy that just picks one or two verses here and there and thinks they know it all?
Who's going to know more about it? The guy that you spend a lot of his time talking to and helping? Or the guy who's all oh, guessing? Because they know God's real because he's moved in their life. And I'm just one. I'm only just one. There's a place down about an hour south of me. Every day, they go out and they, and they minister, but they lay hands. And every day, in the city, an hour down from me, there, there are a bunch of people getting healed. No shit. They're real. They're on Facebook. Early winds are on fire. They're different than me. But I went down to meet the guy. I saw a movie there. You know, it was a little expensive, but I went down. I want to see the guy for myself, right? And that's the way he is. That's okay. He doesn't know some a lot of things I don't uh, that I do, but that's not he's not supposed to. He's got his gig, right? Because Jesus said you could do as I do, and him and his people are different than me. That's okay. They don't have to be. My I have I, I'm here to wake you up, and I lay hands and. I minister some pretty good. I got some time to kill, basically, and this is my um, what do you call it? Casting seeds, I guess is the appropriate word. Still, and working for the Lord till I go and where He wants me to go later, because the time ain't right. I'm here because He said, "Be here." I'm that horse at the gate waiting for it to go open so I can run my race. So Jesus told me I could run my race even uh, a little bit more while I'm waiting, because as soon as He says go, I what do I got? I'm gonna walk out here and I'm gonna go. Because I believe in my God. I do as he says. I follow his precepts. He showed me great wisdom. You guys haven't even bothered to take the time to read them. And all these other ones did. And they actually caught this thing called faith. Right? How do I know? Well, easy. God healed them. God talked to them. They're all over the world. If you stopped uh, doing the fantasy land and actually looked around, there are a whole bunch of people that God has moved in their life. I keep telling them, if, if you've got a great story of God has moved in your life, let me know. I'll put it in my... Great, uh, like powerful testimonies, right? Bernice, man, she's a powerful, mighty warrior of God. You even looked at her edited one, you'd be crying like a baby. Uh -huh. And she'd be doing the whole story, right? It's gonna be on mine there, right there on her page. She's a true sister of Christ, a warrior. And, you know, you, you, you man, you're nothing compared to her. You're too lazy to read the book, the whole book. You gotta cherry pick one or two lines and think you know it all. She reads the book. She reads the word. And guess what? God's moving in her life after everything that's happened to her. The worst things all together put in your life couldn't even put a, a scratch on an iceberg of her misery and suffering. And yet Jesus found her and pulled her from the dunghill chick pile of her life. Just like he found me. I had things, but I was still in a chick pile of my life. Sometimes we don't notice the smell because it changed the name so much. A rose by another name smells as sweet, right? Well, that stuff smells as bad. Even if you change the name and call it whatever you want, or politically correct, or whatever you want, it's the, that stuff's dung still smells. Sometimes you got to call things by their true name. If you're standing there and smelling and you don't know about it, the only way you're going to know about it is because you've been there so long you can't tell. The only way you're going to know somebody comes up and says, hey man, you need a shower. You'll feel a lot better after that when you get that stench off you and you get a breath of clean air. It'll help you think better. Well, consider this a shower call. Take a shower, crack open that book and actually read it. Word per word. You know, don't take one pair, one verse and without taking the verse above it and below of that so you understand the context is what it's talking about. Satan's people are there to kill everybody. They kill the two witnesses. They are not your friends because they kill the two witnesses. The two witnesses work for God. If you are of God, you don't party with the people that kill God's messengers because that makes you a participant of them. And in God's eyes, you are just as guilty as them. And we and God holds anybody who's going to teach or try to teach his word responsible for everybody they lead astray because you're assuming a power of authority just like they did when they tried to take over uh, when Moses and Aaron, his brother, they, they, wanted, they thought they could do better and try to take over the people God picked. The guy's tired of that. And since I, I was supposed to be dead anyway, and I don't care what you do with me, I'm as good. I said, hey, I'm, do what you want. I know where I'm going to be. I don't worry about it. I've had so much pain in my life. I don't care. All I want to be is with Jesus. And he gave me more time to be here instead of taking me. I thought he was going to let my wife stay a little bit longer. He didn't. He took her. So, I'm, hey, I'm ready to go. What do I got to lose? Right? The only person in the world who actually loved me beside uh, Jesus, right? You know, and God, right? God loved me. That's it. The only other person who loved me in this whole world is with him right now. And I got my cat, right? I hope it takes us together, right? That's it. Everybody else abandoned me. 
They all wanted my things, my money, what I knew, how, to, how I could help them do. I reset an entire factory over a weekend. They came in, what happened? I, I rearranged the whole place, and I wasn't even there. I just wrote a little map, told people what to do. They came back, everything was done the way I said. And they're like, wow. But I still lost my job. Because some idiots hit me with a forklift. It's my fault for walking around trying to help these people to redesign a plant. And I lost a job. But who's going to want to hire a broken man? Nobody. So, such is life. Do I cry? Do I weep? Do I do hands full of pills? Do drugs and go, oh, poor me and pop any? No. God doesn't like wimps and babies. He likes people that are willing to stand tall for him. I am like Elijah because I was on that mountainside in one of my adventures. I really was. God is never, oh, never leaves you. He's always with you when you're with him. You turn your back on God and you're too lazy to read his word. You think he's going to have time for you? He loves you, but if you're not willing to make time for him, why do you expect him to make time for you when it's so late in the game? When you don't know the time and the seasons, you think you got forever, man. Sorry. Curtain's falling real soon for the next act, man. Don't you realize the third type could be put up in a matter of days to sell prefab? Time is running out. Wake up, you smell your cappuccino, or, or you know, take some fresh air and get your nose out of the dung and take a shower, and maybe you might get the water out of your eyes and you actually see there's more than the meaning of the Bible than what you're getting out of it, because, hey, God apparently thinks these all these other people on the planet, as a lot of them, are worth healing, and they definitely are not talking that nonsense that's coming out of your mouth. They're actually, I'm hearing these people talk, how great Jesus is and what he does and you read actual scripture and talk about the joy of Jesus and what he's actually done. All I hear is dribble come to your mouth. You can't say one thing Jesus has done because he hasn't. You throw away a perfectly good gift that could have helped somebody of Christ to give it to fools. You cast pearls before swine and you don't think you did anything wrong. Oh well, you know, they're, they're, as long as they're God, you know, uh, they got you know, no man. Only a fool gives away money to fools. That's why somebody's got to come along and say, take a shower, man, and wake up. You go teaching these uh, people stuff. And God said, you teach my little one something. Better you had a millstone around your neck. You threw yourself in the ocean compared to what's coming to you, brother. This is a wake-up call. Take a shower and actually open the book and read it for a change. Don't let somebody else tell you what's in there and live in the fantasy line. Take it from a guy who was healed by God. And I'm sure some other, many others who saw the way you were acting there and what you said there, would tell you the same thing. I just happened to run into you first. And I wanted to save them from having to feel righteous indignation because I'm trying to reach you out of love. I don't know you personally. I don't. I honestly don't. You seem like a nice guy. You have a dog. I love dogs. I, I used to always be a dog person. The Lord blessed me with some things with gods and dogs and not animals. I love animals. But, but, if you can't go living by the word of God, and you profess to be one, but you're not living what it says, and, you, and you're cherry picking what it tells you not to. In the very Bible, you're supposed to read it, it tells you not to cherry pick, that it distorts the marriage, the message, and that's what, exactly what you're doing. It's not about the messenger, it's about the message, and what kind of message are you, are you sending? You're disobeying the very Bible by doing what it tells you not to. You're cherry picking when it tells you not to. If you're too lazy to read it, you have no right to be out there teaching it to people and claiming you know it. Turn around, read it first. And I think a lot of people will agree with that statement. Before you teach it, read it. So you know what you're talking about. So you're not leading dribble, leading the young astray, which is really pissing God off. And if you want to lead his kids astray, better a millstone around your neck. And I'm warning you right now, repent. All you have to say is sorry from the, to God from the heart and mean it. You can even say it publicly if you want. That'd be probably better. But I'll leave that to you. You got your own free will. And say, and start, if you're going to start, talk, do it right there. The whole word, not what you think, but what God meant. There's a total difference. Because the Pharisees might have thought they knew the words, but they didn't even know Jesus was standing in front of them. And you think you're better than me, a guy that talked to Jesus? You think you're better than Bernice, a lady who talked to Jesus? You think you're better than all the other people on the planet that Jesus talked to? They told them to study, and they were studying to show themselves approved. You think you're better than them? Well, you don't even take the time to read what you got, and we did. That's why God spent time with us. And he hasn't spent time with you. Think about it. Do the math. Open your book and read. I've been telling everybody to do that. I'm telling you to do the same thing. And if you did, you wouldn't have fallen victim to all that stuff. And you're supposed to, you've been at this longer than I have. You are the ones that are talked about in Hebrews 5, verses 11 to 14. And I put 11 in there for a reason. Because you guys 
Oh, man, you read it for yourself, man. Too lazy to read, and then don't ask why you're going to ride the slide. Because God said, man, if you warn them, and, and, and if they don't listen or not, imagine, it doesn't matter if they listen or not, your hands are clean in my eyes. But if you don't warn me, you know it's coming. Hey, their blood is earned, and my hands are clean to God, man. I gave it all to you and a little bit extra, because you needed a wake-up call, but somebody's got to shake you up from out of that fantasy land or whatever drugs you're on, man. They melted your brain because a lot of drugs out there are memory loss, and it might not be your fault, right? They drug your food, the fake food, everything else, man. It's lucky you even know uh, your dog's name. You sure don't know what's in the Bible. Bye-bye.